Oh, this definitely woke me up and like coming from a jackass, like I recommend to everybody do not get behind the wheel if you've been drinking. The good thing is now is is uh he's got like he's under a conservatorship, you know? And it's not a conservatorship, it's a guardianship. Oh really? Where and how did Jeff Tremaine and Johnny Knoxville find the Jackass crew? Well, most of us came out of Big Brother magazine where Jeff was the editor and I was one of the contributors and Pontius was a writer and they covered Wee Man, they covered Steve-O. And then we kinda joined forces with Ryan Dunn and Bam Margera from the CKY videos. All right, Lima. All right. Welcome back again. Thank you, thank you for having me. We haven't seen you in a while. Yep. So we finally, after how many months now? It's been like... It's been since nine April. Nine months or something? April, May. So we have the autopsy results for Amanda. Yes, we do. Hi everyone, welcome to my first video with Chloe from Dissociated. Do you want Hi. to explain exactly what your channel is all about? Yes, of course. What is up all my social climate friends it's dustin and i'm back with another video now you guys know it's been a couple days since i've uploaded i haven't really been uploading as much as i was and that's because myself as well as many other people have been doing research on this series that i'm going to be doing about bam margera i would really like to thank bj investigates for all the research that she's given me i'd like to thank her as well as her team they've given me so much information to work with on this because this is a very important issue what we're going to be talking about in my opinion is conservator abuse now you guys know everything that britney spears went through for literal years it was hell britney's life was made almost unlivable and i believe that is what is going on with bam margera now i know that there's going to be a lot of people that are going to click on this video and hear me say that and they're just going to be like you're crazy but i'm not this is just my opinion after all the research that i've done all the things that have been presented to me from bj as well as all these other people that have done research on this thing and i really do feel like this is something that needs more eyes and attention put on it i just want to say before we jump into this i'm not presenting anything to you as a 100 fact unless it's explained explicitly stated there's going to be court documents and things that we're going to get into that are going to be factual and you will know that that is a fact because it's on paper if it's not on paper I can't say that it's 100% fact if you watch this video in this video series I'm pretty sure that you will be able to take away some things that made me think the way that I did when I was researching all this and it was presented to me so I ask that you go into this with an open mind please be respectful of one another in the comments I know that there's going to be varying degrees of opinions with this and that's fine I don't mind people having differences of opinion but I just ask that you remain respectful of one another now with all of that said I do want to say that this video is going to be more of an introduction because there's going to be two other parts in this video series in which I'm going to go in great detail in the next two videos getting into all of this stuff that has happened with Bam Margera but I want to set up the key players for you guys I think you all may know the show Jackass and La Viva La Bam and all that different stuff. But for those of you that may not remember or may not recall or may not even know and you want to know about Bam Margera, I'm here to give you the tea. I'm here to give you everything that is going on with Bam Margera up until this point. So if you're here for that, please stay tuned to this video. Give me a like and subscribe if you like this kind of content. So with all of that said, all of the disclaimers out of the way, let's go. The original cast of Jackass was 10 guys who pulled almost everyone's attention with three simple words. Welcome to Jackass. They graced our TV screens every week and made us laugh in a time where social media was just emerging and the world had yet to see an iPhone. Some people had been introduced to Bam before the rest of the cast. Brandon, Bam Margera, was born on September 28, 1978 in Westchester, not too far away from Philadelphia, where the street skating scene took off in the late 1980s to the 2000s. Leading to the golden age of skateboarding videos and stunts, Bam's grand father is where the name Bam started. He started calling him Bam Bam as he tended to run into walls as a toddler and the name stuck with him. It was shortened to Bam as he aged into school. Bam's immediate family consisted of April and Phil Margera, Jess, his older brother and future drummer of the CKY band, and lastly his uncle Vincent Margera. And if you're my age, I'm 34, I'm going to be 35 in November, you remember Viva La Bam and just how big Jackass was. If I'm not mistaken, I think the MTV used to run like this series where they would play Jackass over and over and over and over 
over like on the weekends. Is that a pipe dream? Is that a fever dream? Do I, am I remembering that correctly? But I remember seeing Jackass so much when I was a teenager. I used to watch it all the freaking time. That along with Room Raiders, Next, and all these different shows that are no longer on TV that were entertaining that they really should bring back. But especially like on Viva La Bam, I remember vividly that Bam Margera was just basically beating his dad's ass and trolling the shit out of his mom. Phil April and Bam were a very close-knit family. It was very easy for anyone to see that. As the boys got older, their talents were clear. Bam had a knack for street skating. He could fly through the streets of Philly with ease and was always looking for a bigger jump while Jess was learning to play the drums and made a band with Bam and another future Jackass star, Ryan Dunn. The band was called Soul Roach, but it broke up as quickly as it assembled. Jess would release his first EP in 1995 with the band Foreign Objects, where he met the future guitarist and vocalist for CKY. The band came together in 1997 for a series of underground videos that would become the blueprint for what we call Jackass today. CKY is actually a band. That's my brother's band. He's the drummer. And, um, and you know, I do all their music videos. I direct them all. And, uh, and you know, and, and the only, the, the tie with that is, uh, you know, we have the CKY crew, which is me, Rab himself, Brandon, Rake, and Ryan. And then we have the band, which is uh, Chad, Darren, and Vern, and Jess. So uh, we all, we're all just pretty much one big crew, and uh, you know if they're gonna put out a record and I'm gonna put out a video, it's it's all of us anyway. Like you know, right. it's just it's just one big posse, I guess. The boys put the video together and Jess independently released all four of the CKY videos. CKY stands for Can't Kill Yourself. The CKY series helped Bam get noticed and launched his skating career with him going pro in 1998. Now I don't know why I feel so old sitting here. I always felt like Bam Margera was closer to my age than what he is, but reporting on all of this stuff makes me feel incredibly old. I did not realize that Bam was so much older than me. Now of course we cannot talk about Jackass, CKY, and all this different stuff without talking about Johnny Knoxville. We all know who Johnny Knoxville is. He's a major part of Jackass. He and Bam were friends for a very long time, but he and Bam have had a lot of drama over the past couple of years because they really don't see eye to eye on things, and I understand why, and we're going to get into it more a little bit in this video as well as the other videos that I'm going to be putting out in the series. Johnny Knoxville was born John P. Clapp in Knoxville, Tennessee. Early on, he showed potential as a baseball player, making it to the Knoxville All-Star Game, getting an honorable mention for his pitching skills. Hey, Blue, what does it take to be a good Little League umpire? You gotta have a good set of eyes. He read Jack Kerouac's On the Road and credits it for giving him the acting bug. He loaded up his things and headed to Hollywood in 1989. And like I was just saying with Bam and everything, this makes me feel like super duper old because I didn't start kindergarten, I think, until like 1991 or 1992. So this goes way back. Now, of course, Johnny wasn't able to catch the big break that he thought he was gonna get because we all know this dream that everyone used to have. If you go out to California, you can make it big. That just did not happen for Johnny Knoxville at first. Now, Johnny started started writing all these different articles for different publications just to pay his bills, and that's when he met Jeff Tremaine. And he had the bright idea to test self-defense items on himself. And this was kind of him paying homage to his hero, Hunter S. Thompson. Now at the time, Jeff Tremaine actually ran a magazine about skateboarding called Big Brother. He featured Johnny as well as Bam in Big Brother, and from this, Jackass was born. Jeff and Johnny knew what they wanted to do, so Jeff created a pilot from Big Brother 2 footage and footage from Bam's skating videos with help from his friend and director, Spike Johnsy, things started to fall into place for the pair. Jeff Tremaine would direct while Johnny Knoxville would be responsible for most of the stunt ideas. And for this reason, Johnny Knoxville somewhat became the leader of the group. Now at this time, Bam Margera was still filming CKY videos and they were still doing very well for him. So people were also realizing that Bam had star potential. Now all the way back in 1999, Jeff Tremaine actually flew Bam Margera out to talk about possibly making a pilot for the show that we know now as Jackass. And he knew that this would probably sell because at that point in time, MTV would run anything Thing, and people just loved Jackass. And I really think that Jackass became a lot bigger than they initially thought that it ever would have been. All the spinoffs and all these different things that came out of Jackass made a lot of money. Now, originally, Saturday Night Live entered an offer for the guys to do a recurring bid on the show each week, but Tremaine turned it down. Then a bidding war was incited between Comedy Central and MTV, and we all know how that turned out. We all know what happened. MTV won, and Jackass was born. Now, Jackass actually debuted on October 1st, 2000, with 2.4 million viewers between 12 
12 and 34 years old. So that was a big demographic. This show was reaching so many different people. And I remember being young and with my cousins and stuff and they would be like, jackass. And they would hit me with like a, a little pipe or something. They like literally beat the shit out of one another. I don't know how good jackass was for us at that age, but it was entertaining to watch nonetheless. Now there is an Instagram story where Bam talks about Johnny Knoxville and how he's treated him and what he's been through and how he feels about the way that Johnny Knoxville acts toward him now. Knoxville, on the other hand, I'm not too fond of just because he's the one who introduced me to Adderall and then he made me get off of it cold turkey and he still takes it. And we've all seen Jackass. We know how these people treated their bodies. There was a lot of like injuries that went into this. There was a lot of people that were hurt and there's a lot of people that were on Jackass that have lifelong injuries because of being on the show. And a lot of this can cause people to start self-medicating. So I understand, but I also think that this was just a bad situation for all these people that were involved. Now, I know you heard the name Jeff Tremaine a little bit ago when I was explaining everything with Johnny Knoxville. Now I have to talk about Jeff Tremaine and how he got into all of this so you guys will know going forward who Jeff Tremaine is because I want to give you a little bit more background and just letting you know that he was part of this magazine. Sold as a teen skateboard magazine, Big Brother has upset a number of local parents because mixed in with skateboard articles and stories of graphic sex, is an article that details how to kill yourself. Well, here's something your children may be reading that you should definitely know about. It's a shocking magazine. It tells you how to commit suicide. It tells you all about drug use and also explicit descriptions of sex. It may seem hard to believe, but this magazine is really aimed at kids. Jeff is the oldest member of Jackass being born in September of 1966. He is the producer and is attached to all the Jackass projects. Jeff was the former editor for the Big Brother magazine, as well as the director of the BMX magazine, Go. Jeff went to high school with filmmaker Spike Jonze, so when he met Johnny and heard his ideas, he pitched them to Spike. From there, Jackass as we know it was born. After Jackass, Tremaine became a mainstay at MTV, producing a slew of shows, including Rob Deirdrick's Fantasy Factory, Ridiculousness, Nitro Circus, and Loiter Squad for Adult Swim. He went on to work on films such as The Dirt, The Motley Crue Biopic. He also worked with the WWE in their series Swerved. In 2016, he was actually brought on with American Airlines to film their new video for safety. You know that video that they make you watch when you get on an airplane where they explain the air mask and all this different stuff? He directed one of those. Now, Jeff Tremaine and Bam had a pretty good relationship up until Jackass Forever because they ended up getting into some kind of argument and an altercation, and Jeff ended up taking a temporary restraining order out on Bam Margera in May of 2021. Well, another sure sign that Bam Margera is not going to be in the next Jackass movie. Uh, the director has just gotten a restraining order against Bam, and he says this was necessary because of threats he was getting from Bam, not only against himself, but also against his family, and that was uh, a line that was crossed for Jeff Tremaine, so he went to court and got this restraining order. So right now, as it stands at this point, Bam and Jeff are not cool. And personally, after everything that happened with Paramount, I don't blame Bam Margera. Now, if you don't know what happened with Paramount and Bam Margera, during the filming of Jackass Forever, Bam was subjected to take numerous different drug tests every single day, and they ended up failing him because of Adderall, and Bam was actually on prescription Adderall. They didn't care, and that's why they tossed Bam out, and he ended up suing them. And he won. They settled out of court. So, Jackass 4, you were removed from the project. What happened? Well, basically, um, it started off with, bam, y y you've been out there on TMZ being a jackass, and, and you're almost like a liability. Um, I'm like, wait a minute. Are you telling me that I'm too jackass for jackass? I went to rehab for Adderall and alcohol. And I went there thinking I was going to do 30 days, but they insisted that I do 90 days. Uh -huh. And I'm like, all right, is, is this on my bill or yours? Well, it's on mine. I'm like, well, all right, I don't want to do it, but I'll do it because you give me $5 million every time we do a movie or more. When I go in for Adderall and alcohol, I come out on Zoloft, Visterol, Bipropion Lithium, Concerta, Propanol, Seroquel, Contrave, Trazodone, Vivitrol, Naltrexone, Latuda, Zeprexa, Lexapro, Abilify, Walbutrin, Fralar, and Adderall, because I have ADD, and Klonopin. And Dr. Knoxville said, you're allowed to take all that except Adderall and Klonopin. I'm like, well, who are you to say? This is what the doctors say I need. And, and, and then it led to suicidal tendencies on all 18 medications that I was on. I'm like, well, what's the point of a $5 million contract that I have to walk on eggshells and jump through your hoops, which is already impossible, Yeah. Um, to, to obey if I'm dead? What the fuck 
you... is, is the point of having the money if I'm not here anymore because I was going to die of a pill overdose or suicidal thoughts. Do you blame production for putting you through all that or are you going to take It any... was the definition of fucking torture. Yeah. They tortured me. I've been on Adderall for 13 years, two a day at 20 milligrams, and, and they don't want me to take it anymore, and I found myself sleeping all day. Well, I found a loose one in my car on my road trip, and I took it. Yeah. One. You're, are you, you're planning on taking action against... Well, against I mean, I didn't want it to come down to this, but I mean, I have no choice. They keep saying, Ben, we love you, and it's not about the movie. Um, it is about the movie, because that's all I've been wanting to do for 10 years, and now you make me jump through hoops for two years, and, and I'm walking around chain smoking, realizing that there's nothing I could do to please you. Now, of course, we can't talk about Jackass and Viva La Bam or Bam Margera even without talking about Ryan Dunn. Ryan Dunn was basically the glue that held all of these people together, in my opinion. A lot of people attribute everything that Bam is going through to Ryan Dunn passing. I don't necessarily agree with that, but that's a lot of people's thoughts on the situation. But I kind of want to talk about Ryan Dunn and his passing just a little bit because he was such an important person to this story. Now, in 2006, when they were filming Jackass 2, Ryan Dunn was injured by a Horse. He and Bam were supposed to be pulled off camera by this horse, and you can only imagine how that went. Ryan actually fell onto his shoulder, which caused a blood clot and a lot of muscle damage. And this was almost fatal for Ryan then because he had this blood clot that was around his brain and it could have went to his heart. And then on top of this, he found out that he had Lyme disease. And this actually led to Ryan withdrawing a little bit from the group because he was in so much pain and hurting and having to recover. But he eventually returned to the cast of Jackass 3 and 3.5. Ryan even said the production of Jackass 3 was actually more fun than the entire series. But unfortunately, after healing from all of this and getting back in the saddle in June of 2011, Ryan died in a car crash. The latest in the death of reality TV star Ryan Dunn of Westchester. The coroner's toxicology report shows that Dunn was extremely drunk when he crashed his Porsche on the Route 322 bypass early Monday morning. Both Dunn and his passenger, Zach Harkwell, were killed in the crash, and police have revealed just how fast the car was going. NBC 10's Deanna Durante is live in Westchester, where a private viewing for Dunn is underway tonight. Deanna. Tim, police estimate that Ryan Dunn was driving more than 132 miles an hour, perhaps as much as 140 miles an hour, and we're also told by investigators that his blood alcohol measured at twice the legal limit. Uh, now, we can tell you that, you can see behind us, there are a number of people here who are mourning the death of the popular reality TV star, including his very close friends. It's a growing line of friends mourning the life of a local star who died Monday in a fiery wreck in Chester County. We have been um, a fan, you know, and we just live down the street and uh, pay our respects. It's sad. As friends and family remember Ryan Dunn, his fans continue to visit the crash site. Now fans are learning that police estimate the Jackass star was driving more than 130 miles an hour. Scotian police say they estimate speeds at 132 to 140 miles an hour and confirm Dunn was legally drunk at the time of the crash, saying his blood alcohol level was 0.196. The point of intoxication in Pennsylvania is 0.08. See, that's how people are. They're just like having fun, living on the edge. I mean, unfortunately, it didn't work out as how he planned it, so records show just under two dozen citations for the movie start in Chester County since the late 1990s, including a 2005 DUI. West Goshen police say on Monday when Dunn crashed his car into several trees just off 322, he had a valid Pennsylvania license and his 2007 Porsche was properly insured. Police say two calls came in reporting the crash after 2.30 a.m. Monday morning. Dunn did post a picture of himself and Hartwell drinking Sunday night at a Westchester bar. Yesterday, close friend and co-star Ben Margera visited the crash scene breaking down as he looked at the charred scene where his friend lost his life. Late this afternoon, Margera's family was escorted into the funeral home to pay their respect to Dunn's family. And Bam Margera was seen outside just a little while ago. He arrived sometime earlier, perhaps, with Dunn's family. We can also tell you that on Saturday, Zach Hartwell will be remembered here at the same funeral home in Westchester. Friends and family can pay their respects between 11 and 1. Reporting live in Westchester, Deanna Durante. 10 News.
This had a ripple effect on Bam as well as Johnny Knoxville and even Steve-O. Now it must be noted that it wasn't just Ryan that passed away in this car accident. He had a friend that was with him named Zachary Hartwell that also passed away. Now shortly before all of this, Ryan had actually posted a picture of him and Zachary having drinks at Barnaby's and it turns out after blood and toxicology reports came back that Ryan's blood alcohol level was twice that of the legal limit. And they estimated that he was driving anywhere between 132 miles an hour and 140 miles an hour in a 55 mile an hour zone. You can only imagine how just awful this was. Now Zachary's family ended up suing Ryan Dunn's estate as well as many other people that Ryan was affiliated with in a wrongful death suit. No one knows how this actually panned out. There's no kind of documentation, but I believe that they may have settled out of court. But after all this was said and done, I do believe that this left Bam in a very broken state. He was very upset. It was his best friend. <laughs> I've never lost anybody that I care about. <laughs> it's my best friend. <laughs> I was in Arizona when I heard, and I just remember we're, I was with some friends having the best time ever. And at 12.30, I just started punching out the windows of the rental van and ripping out the speakers, and I don't even know why. I wasn't mad at anything or anybody, and... And if it's 12.30 there, that means that it was exactly when he crashed. <laughs> Anyone that loses a friend or a family member, you know the griefing process. You know how long that can take, and some wounds just never heal. But now we need to talk about Steve-O. Steve-O actually runs his own YouTube channel here now, where he talks about things that happen on Jackass as well as Bam Margera, and it seems a little bit clickbaity because every time he'll talk about Bam or Johnny Knoxville or something, it always just seems like he's doing it for fluff because you'll see some videos on his channel will get views and others won't. But Steve-O was born Stephen Gilchrist Glover on June 13th, 1974 in Wimbledon, London. His mother was Canadian and his father was American, giving him dual citizenship. He by far has the most interesting background of all the guys. He seems to have come from a pretty stable household, and with his father running the South American division of Pepsi, they grew up in a healthy environment that fostered growth. They moved to Brazil when he was six months old for his dad's job, then to Venezuela where he became fluent in Spanish. And when he was four, they moved to Connecticut, and then he moved to Miami when he was six years old, and they moved a whole bunch of different places, and then when he was 13, they moved back to England, where he stayed and actually ended up completing high school. Sipo actually even ended up going to the University of Miami to study communications, but he ended up dropping out a year later due to a low attendance and bad grades. And he got in trouble a lot with the disciplinary board, so he just ended up not going back. Sipo actually even went to the University of New Mexico between 96 and 1997, and he ended up finally graduating from Ringling Brothers Barnum and Bailey Clown College in 1997. And he ended up working at the Fort Lauderdale Swap Shop. While performing in the flea market circus as a clown, Steve-O has spoken candidly about his drug issue stating to people in January 2019 that he had walked into his dealer's house and was cutting a line when he realized the powder had what looked like a blood splatter on it and his dealer was HIV positive. He said of his addictions at this point that he realized that he was desperate and pathetic in that moment, then snorted the line. He told people that he worried about the long-term health effects on his life as well as the effects of all of his stunts. He said that he can remember at least five times that he was hit or his head was hit with something so hard that he completely blacked out. The most concerning thing for him though was when he landed on a second floor balcony on his face. Now, Steve-O has been sober for 10 years now, and he heavily thanks Johnny Knoxville for this, as well as his jackass family members and all of the people that have supported him throughout these years. And he always makes it a point to say that Johnny Knoxville rescued him and saved his life in 2008 when they did this intervention. I've never seen Johnny Knoxville look this pissed. They told me that they were going to bring me in to uh, the hospital for a 72-hour evaluation. And initially, I was defiant. I told him I was fine. I didn't want to go. I said, actually, Steve-O, I, I realize you don't want to go, but if you're telling us no, I've instructed everyone to knock you out, and then we'll take you. He's like, okay, dude, I'll go. <laughs> Just on a dime. <laughs> He's not a very violent person. That afternoon, the jackass crew escorted Steve-O to the psychiatric ward at Cedars-Sinai Hospital. Stevo had been pulled back from the brink of suicide, but now he faced the most challenging stunt of his life, getting sober. 
Now, this sounds like a very triumphant story where he faced adversity and overcame his issues. But once you start to peel the layers of the situation back just a little bit, it's really not what it seems. Steve-O would actually become the blueprint on how the franchise would handle what they call and deem drug issues. And before we get any further into this video, I just want to say before we even get into Bam Margera and what's going on with Bam Margera in these next videos, I think that conservatorships are bad. I feel like they should be reserved for people that are really not in their, any kind of state of mind to take care of themselves. We've seen what happened to Brittany. We've seen how that has affected her for so long. And I think that if someone doesn't want to get help, although we can generally guess what's going to happen, they shouldn't be forced into getting help if they don't want to get help. Period. Point blank. Now, remember that lawsuit I was talking about just a little bit ago about Paramount and all these different people that were involved with Jackass and the new Jackass Forever. In my opinion, they tried to use what they did with Steve-O to work with Bam to try to get him to not use drugs. And in Bam's defense, he wasn't really using any drugs that were not prescribed to him. They failed him because he took Adderall, which is something that was prescribed to Bam Margera that he needed for his ADHD. Bam eventually filed court documents to dismiss this action as a private settlement had been reached. The suit alleged that he had been forced to sign a wellness agreement during a 2019 stint in rehab in order to star in the 2022 movie Jackass Forever. Now, Johnny Knoxville and Jeff Tremaine commonly shed what they call tears over Bam departing from the series. And of course, this sent TMZ into a flurry and they were making all kinds of different articles about Bam Margera, about how he was a junkie. If you take anything away from this video, just know that I think that TMZ is a piece of shit for the things that they have done and the things and the narratives that they have pushed against Bam Margera for years. Bam signed this agreement in good faith. He signed the agreement because he trusted these men. He felt that they were family. A lot of people could say that he signed this under distress. And if you sign a contract under distress, nine times out of 10, usually that means that you can get out of the contract. And he didn't even have a lawyer present to really help him understand what he was signing himself up for, which is very suspicious if you ask me. Now, before we get into the next part of this video, I would like to let you guys know that right now over on GerardCosmetics.com, they are running their Black Friday and July sale. And that means that you can get 51% off everything. When I say everything, I mean everything, including hair AF. And you guys know that I swear by hair AF, my hair was falling out. I was losing like literally every bit of hair that I had in my head. And that's what restored my hair. And right now you can even get 51% off of it. And you'll get free shipping on orders over $20. And you'll get free international shipping on orders over $100. So, I mean, that's a really good deal. If you'd like, go stock up on some lip glosses, some hair AF if you've been buying it and it works for you because it absolutely did change my life. And this is in no way sponsored or anything. Thing. Ginger Art is just one of my very best friends. I love her and I swear by her products, especially Hair AF. And the best part about this is there's no affiliate code for you to use. You can just shop on the website without any kind of codes. I'll leave in the description box down for you guys to check out if you would like to do so. Now out of everyone that I've discussed in this video, it brings me to Lima Jevramovich, one of the most weird people in the world, in my opinion, because she believes that a VR headset can help you cure anxiety. It can help you cure eating disorders. She even believes that it can help you cure substance abuse issues. I don't know about all that. She is literally one of the most elusive people that I have ever researched in my entire life. And you guys know that I have put in my hours researching people on the videos that I've made. Now, Lima is very active on social media, especially on her Lima for Mora Instagram page. But prior to this, Lima went by Lima Mora. She also had Lima Mora Tequali, Lima Tequali Mora, Lima Tequali Jovramovich. And just for my sanity and yours in this video, I'm just going to be referring to Lima as Lima from here on out, just because the word vomit that will Will come out of my mouth by trying to say her last name. I'm going to butcher it and I don't mean any kind of disrespect. No, actually I do. All offense. But just to make it easier for me, I'm just going to be referring to Lima as Lima. But speaking of Lima and Lima from Aura, let's talk about Aura for a minute. Aura is a virtual reality program that is used with a VR headset to allegedly treat all kinds of things, such as trauma and PTSD, eating disorders, chronic and complex pain, mood disorders, behavioral disorders, anxiety disorders, and finally what they call substance use disorders. And if you think that I'm making this up, I'm not. It's literally on the meetaura.io website. This lady literally thinks that one of these is going to cure all of these things. And I'm going to explain to you why I think that she's really batshit crazy and how I think that she has all these people fooled with what kind of person she really is. Now, I'm going to put a screenshot of the Lima from Aura Instagram page here up on the screen just so you can see what I'm about to tell you. So this is Lima's Instagram page. She has 243 posts, 118,000 followers and 573 people she is following. She says that she's an entrepreneur and she makes video games that save lives. Hmm. Funny. Yes but not funny, haha, ha. funny, weird. 
Now, there's a few things that we should take note of here while looking at this Instagram page. Lima is the actual director of Aura, this crazy VR program and software that I told you about. So you would think that the VR headset that she has on in her default profile picture would actually be her headset because she'd want everyone to see that but it's not. It's actually a VR headset from PlayStation with the PlayStation logo actually removed. In my opinion, this is very deceptive. And if you don't believe me, let me show you a video of the VR headset from PlayStation. it's clear as day that that's a PlayStation VR. You can actually see the Aura headset here in the video that Lima posted on her Instagram page featuring Amanda Rabb from Soft White Underbelly. We'll talk more about Amanda Rabb and Bam Margera after this clip. Oh my God! <laughs> what the fuck? Oh! oh my God! Let me do it. Now, there's many things that can be said about this virtual reality thing that Lima has going on that she's treating people with that's in her care because I just don't think that VR is there yet to where we're going to be able to like immerse people in a way that would make them feel like this is actually real because that shit looks like it was filmed on a toaster. Now, the second thing that really sticks out to me is the fact that Bam Margera and his wife Nikki are on the billboard in this video with a caption that says, Bam and Nikki Margera join forces with Aura to lead a revolution in mental health care. And the last and final thing that I think that we should really take note of in this video is the fact that it's Amanda Rabb from Soft White Underbelly. Now, this video was posted by Lima to this page on April 11th, 2021, and Amanda ended up sadly passing away on May 9th, 2021. So that was not that much longer after this video was posted. We'll get way more in depth in my next video about Amanda Rabb and who she was and how I feel like she was exploited in all of this in my next video. But Lima even made a post thanking Nikki as well as Bam Margera on April 19th of 2021 and she had the following to say. Thank you for all of your support with Amanda and to Bam and Nikki for backing us. Amanda is doing so well and we will be using Aura's mobile telehealth application as she transitions to lower levels of care and gains more freedom. The Aura app will help to provide support, connect her to her healthcare team, and alert her clinician before possible relapse so we can aid her in the fight to stay sober day to day. Now clearly I'm not a doctor in any capacity but I don't think that using a headset is going to help people like Amanda or anyone suffering from real drug abuse. And the fact that Lima's tagline on her Instagram is that she makes video games that saves lives really just creeps me out and makes me feel really icky. You'll understand why the further we get into this in my next video but I just don't like Lima. Now, it's my understanding that Bam wanted to possibly invest in this Aura brand. So that's how Lima actually ended up getting connected with them. We're going to get a little further into that too in the next video. But it would lead me to believe with what I'm going to tell you next that he may have actually went through with it. Now, regardless if he invested in Aura or not, I believe that there is a conflict of interest with Lima because she is now his guardian. This is so weird because this happened over a couple months. I'll explain more in just a second, but I want you to watch this clip of BJ from That Surprise Witness so you can understand just the gravity of what's going on with Lima in this conservatorship. We all know how everything happened with Britney Spears, and I just really feel in my gut like this may be somewhat of the same thing. So you guys just check out this clip. I just uncovered some exclusive Bam Margera court documents, and I am seriously alarmed. On June 4th, 2021, this lady named Lima Yavremovich filed to be Bam Margera's guardian, aka conservator, in the state of Arizona. Look closely. She not only applied to be his temporary guardian, but she also filed for a permanent guardianship over Bam Margera in Maricopa County. Well, Miss Lima was real busy that day because it's the same day that she got her guardianship certification. So she became certified to be a guardian on June 4th, 2021 and still had time to file for a temporary and permanent guardianship over Bam Margera on the same day. Now, Lima was also listed as Bam Margera's health surrogate in the state of Florida on a police report that I just procured from when he just now had this flee from rehab incident. 
TMZ reports that Bam had been off his medication for several days whenever he did leave rehab. So if he was taking medication in rehab and he stopped taking it when he voluntarily left, was someone making him take that medication while he was in rehab? Possibly his healthcare surrogate? Just wait, it gets worse. TMZ reported Bam Margera had fled his rehab on June 15th, 2022. But look what these court documents say. It says Lima's appointment expires on June 10th, 2022. But on June 15th, TMZ reported that Bam was escaping rehab that he was in under a court order. Which is demonstrably untrue based on these court documents I uncovered. So I requested the police report from that very day. And as you can see, Officer Adam Whiting responded to the scene and made contact with the rehab manager who really wanted Bam picked up and taken to detox. But at that time, the officer said there was not court paperwork authorizing this. He told the rehab manager to call him back when he got a signed court order. But until then, there was really nothing he could do. So the question that's on my mind and that should be on everyone's mind under what legal authority did the police pick Bam back up on June 15th, 2022, if the police themselves admit there was no court paperwork authorizing such a transfer? Who is Lima Yaremovich and where is Bam Margera? So going with the timeline, Lima thanked Nikki and Bam for joining forces with Aura for the revolution in mental health care in April of 2021. And then just a few short months later, in June of 2021, Lima filed to become Bam Margera's conservator. Now, we all know the T with conservatorships. I just think that they're mad all the way around unless it's just absolutely medically necessary where the person is completely incapacitated and they cannot care for themselves. I believe in full bodily autonomy. Now, it must also be noted that Bam Margera's wife, Nikki, posted an Instagram story 65 weeks ago with a guy named Albert Monero Jr. Now I'm not going to get too far into him in this video, probably not even really at all, but just know that he's on the board of directors for Aura, which is Lima's company, so that should tell you everything that you need to know. But this Instagram was posted by Nikki 65 weeks ago, and I looked it up, and that would have been Thursday, April 8, 2021. So that would have been right around the time that this video would have been filmed with Amanda Rapp, and then Nikki was on her Instagram post saying that this guy was family- what, like, how is he family? Now that he's, in my opinion, allegedly helping hold Bam captive. But now we need to talk about the transhumanist party and their beliefs. And let me tell you, if you know anything about Scientology, it's very much giving me that. Those people are weird. These people are weird. So I'm going to read this to you so you understand what the transhumanist party is because Lima is a part of it. The California party is organized by academic and industry leaders who put science, health, and technology at the forefront of American politics. What is transhumanism? The term transhumanism was popularized in 1957 by Julian Huxley, evolutionary biologist and first director general of the United Nations Educational, Scientific, and Cultural Organization. The human species can if it wishes, transcend itself, not just sporadically, an individual here in one way, an individual there in another way, but in its entirety as humanity. We need a name for this new belief. Perhaps transhumanism will serve. Man remaining man, but transcending himself by realizing new possibilities of and for his human nature. I believe in transhumanism. Once there is enough people, we can truly say that the human species will be on the threshold of a new kind of existence. As different from ours as ours is, from that of peaking man. It will last be consciously fulfilling its real destiny. For more information, the Transhumanism Handbook is available for download on Amazon. <laughs> That's just weird. You guys can't pass those things out for free like Scientology. <laughs> Let me stop. Now, of course, transhumanism does have these goals that they want to accomplish, and I want to read a few of those for you. So California's transhumanist party goals are to establish socioeconomic equality, promote physical super longevity, achieve world peace, protect earth and restore clean environment, science plus technology plus equalism equals faith. This is very much giving me Scientology vibes. And then it says... Elimination of human exploitation by full labor automation. Active use of digital democracy to improve democratic practices. No, we do not need AI running our lives. We just don't. Do you watch anything about science? Do you know what a singularity is? Government run by artificial intelligence. 
establishment of centrally planned economy managed by artificial intelligence, elimination of money with the help of technology, free education for all, free health care for all. Now, these last two and the first couple I can get with, with with the establishment of socioeconomic equality and to promote physical super longevity, that would be amazing. I can get behind that. But if I had to put on a headset to do that, or if you think that that's going to get us to where that's going to happen, it's just not realistic. So just to recap, we have Lima befriending Bam Margera, then a few months later filing for a conservatorship. We have Nikki Boyd, Bam Margera's wife, calling Albert Monero Jr. family on Instagram months before the conservatorship. Amanda Rabb mysteriously dies while in Lima's care. Lima is part of this wacky-ass group of people called the Transhumanist Party. But what if I told you that Bam Margera and Amanda Rabb were not the only people that Lima had in a conservatorship or a guardianship? We're going to dive deeply into that in my next video as well. We're going to talk about Dia and Dahlia, Lima's identical twin sisters, and what happened to them, and how they just mysteriously disappeared from the internet overnight. And these girls were popping back in the day. You're gonna see when I show you everything about them just how popular they were. These girls were honestly beautiful, and I think that they were really on their way because they both have like 20 IMDb credits already, so they did a lot of work. But what I'm gonna leave you off with here is the fact that I think that Bam Margera may be part of a sinister money game called the Florida Shuffle. Now, if you don't know what the Florida Shuffle is, I'm gonna give you a brief description of it here. It says, the Florida Shuffle describes a recruitment of drug users with good health insurance to repeatedly attend various rehab centers and sober living houses, which allows the facilities to repeatedly bill the patient's insurance company. And it only takes about two brain cells to know where this is going to go. Now, it wasn't mentioned in the description, but many people die of mysterious causes in rehab facilities in the United States. It's actually becoming an epidemic in and of itself. It's very very scary. We're going to dive deeply into that as well as Lima and the whole board of directors and what I believe could possibly be going on with Bam Margera. We have all the court documents. Thanks again, BJ, for all of that information. We have so much research that has been compiled on everything and I really can't wait to show it to you guys. That is the end of this video. I just wanted to give you a summarization of all the people that are involved, the key players, and what we're going to be getting into in the next video so you're familiar, so you can understand just everything that I'm going to piece together for you guys, but please let me know your thoughts and opinions down below. I'm really excited to be doing this series. It's very different than anything that I've ever really done in the past, and I'm excited to be doing this type of content now, you guys, but please be respectful of one another. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down below, and I'll see you all in my next video. <laughs> Bye, guys.